Hi, this is Erika Kassab from a Small Robot Studio. It's October 2022 and we have a new Nomad Sculpt release. It has been more than 10 months since the last one, so it comes with lots of new things like subsurface scattering materials, pixel art post-processing, or simply the interface in 14 different languages. You can check out the list of new features if you head over to the change log thread inside the Nomad forums. Today, I want to show you my top 5 features. I will show you using this character, which I started sculpting during a livestream. Number 5 is the Radial Repeater. You'll find it inside the scene menu when pressing the Add button. This is the menu where we can find all the objects in our file. It looks quite different than it used to. It may seem a bit intimidating with all these new buttons, but I promise, it's awesome. This little magical rat boy carries a very special prop that features a star. I originally created it by cloning cones, rotating them around a sphere to later merge them. A repetitive task which involved manual pivot adjustment and some maths to figure out how many degrees to rotate each item. But now I can finally say bye bye to using maths, because all I have to do is create one cone, then add a radial repeater, select how many times I want it, and adjust the position of the original mesh. Within the scene menu, this mesh is placed inside a special folder. While selecting the object, you'll modify the original pieces. All the clones will follow, but by picking the folder, you can move them around as a group. Let's continue with number 4, the mirror repeater. But wait, mirroring is not new to Nomad? Yes, this existed on a previous release when creating primitives, but now you can apply it to any mesh, validated or not. By selecting the mirror folder, you can change the mirroring axis or select more than one at the same time. Any transformation or change in the mesh will be mirrored as well. The mirror repeater makes the task much faster and allows for easy adjustments. While building this guy, I created only one half of everything to later duplicate it and flip it. Select the eye, apply the mirror, and done! Same for the sides of the bow or the wings. Pretty handy. But let's move on to something more exciting. My next favorite feature is located just above the ladder. Group. The scene menu of this project used to be a nightmare, an endless list of objects, which was going to get worse since I only had one half of my character build. With the selection lasso, which is by the way also a new tool, I can quickly select everything that makes the magic rod, group it, and there we go. It's all contained inside this folder. I can even make more folders within the main one. And while I'm not working on these pieces, I can collapse them and get rid of all that visual clutter. If you are wondering about these floating icons, these are for selecting the different types of folders in your scene. Just like you can tap on a mesh and move it, you can tap on this and transform a whole group. You can easily hide them by turning off these icons at the bottom of the scene menu. Now, before I show you my very exciting top two, I'm gonna take a moment to thank the amazing human beings that support the channel via Patreon. You guys are brilliant. Thank you so, so much. Our Patreon supporters gain access to a growing library of assets. As a reward for this video, you'll get the final model of the Magical Rat Boy ready for painting textures. Learn more about it at patreon.com slash smallrobotstudio. Anyway, time for number two. Parenting. I got to the point in which I was ready to pose my character. But I was dreading working in Nomad because of how clunky and time-consuming this process was. Take one arm, for example. It is made of a bunch of pieces. Move this, rotate a bit. 
select the next piece, adjust pivot, and fix the location. Oh no, I didn't like it, so I had to adjust everything all over again. No, no more. With the new update, grouping certainly helps, but parenting is better. In the scene menu, by selecting a mesh and dragging it over another, it becomes its child, meaning that it will follow any movement, rotation, or scaling that the parent does. So, I made a group for the hand and parented that to the forearm. Then, I parented the forearm to the upper arm. With a bit of pivot adjustment, BAM! Posing is so much easier and faster! Does it get any better? Oh yeah, it does. Because we have number one left. Instancing. I still have only one half of my character. We could apply a mirror to complete it, but that would mean that the pose would look the same on both sides. So, in this case, I want an instance. A clone that inherits the same shape, but can be transformed independently. For example, the ears, they are meant to be the same shape, but the rotations are different. By creating an instance of the original, I can place each independently. If you are wondering how is this different from just cloning, well, let's say I need to fix a shape or I forgot to add some detail. Whatever change I need to do on one, it will update the other. So yeah, top five features. Radial repeaters, mirror repeaters, grouping, parenting, and instances. Getting this character to the final pose took a bit of everything, especially the top three. If all of this looks a bit too complicated, don't worry. This is merely an overview. I'll create videos explaining each tool with details. In the meantime, I recommend doing tests with only a few meshes, like a very simple mechanical arm. Don't start with a quadruped like this character. Anyway, let me know which tools you would like to see on the next videos. I'll see you soon! Happy sculpting and posing! That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.